Well, Gen Z, Americans 10 to 25 years old, are so often criticized by other generations, right? They are called entitled, too apathetic, too quick to cancel. The list goes on. But at least two Gen Zers told me they are ready for a seat in Congress. The first Gen Z candidates are making a run for Congress now. They're looking to make an impact on our nation. And I spoke with two of them. While they may be from the same generation, technically, ideologically, they could not be more different. First, there is Maxwell Frost. He is a Democrat running for Congress in Florida's 10th Congressional District, 25 years old, and that is the minimum age to serve in the House of Representatives. And then there is 24-year-old Caroline Levitt, a staunch Republican running for Congress in New Hampshire's 1st District. She is turning 25 in August, giving her a shot to serve in Congress by next January. She's running for the seat in September's primary. We started this interview with Caroline. So Caroline, we want to start with something that is top of mind for all of us right now. As a young adult, what is your plan to stop the epidemic of mass shootings in our country? Well, certainly I would like to begin by expressing my thoughts and prayers for all of the families that were just struck with the recent tragedy in Illinois. This is definitely becoming far too common in our nation. Uh, however, I believe that America, as many Americans do, does not have a gun problem. We have a culture problem. The one commonality in all of these shootings is that it occurs from mentally deranged, isolated young men who show many, many disturbing and troubling signs, oftentimes on social Social media uh, that they are seeking to cause harm and destruction. So what we're missing in America today, in my opinion, is a lack of faith, a lack of God, a lack, lack of family, and a lack of community amongst our youth. We need to ensure that our young people are growing up in a country that they believe in, uh, that they have faith in our public education system, uh, that they are involved in extracurricular activities. Oftentimes when you see that is the one commonality in all of these tragedies that is occurring. Well, so, and Caroline, you know, I'm sorry, I, I just have to I just have to ask we have heard that for 20 years now so how would you respond to people who are frustrated people who say perhaps the only thing more predictable than mass shootings in our country is the GOP response that this is a mental health issue and not a gun problem well, it absolutely is a mental health issue because that's what the facts relay. If you look at every single city in this country that has the most restrictive, quote, gun control measures on the books, they have the highest crime rate. Here in New Hampshire, where I'm from, where I'm running for Congress, we have the highest capacity of gun ownership of any state in the country and some of the lowest crime. And so more laws at both the federal level and the state and local level that only infringe on the rights of law abiding citizens is not the answer. We have to control our culture, not the access to firearms, especially for law abiding Americans. I would like to see, in fact, more firearms, more firearms in the hands of people that can stop these bad guys from perpetrating these shootings. And then we do have to look into social media and what role these big companies play in allowing this violent and very disturbing rhetoric to be shared on their platform forms oftentimes before these tragedies occur. Yeah, we understand. And I think many are looking to you and also to the gentleman we'll be speaking with in a moment for a fresh perspective, hoping that Gen Z will come in and make changes. It does sound an awful lot like the same thing we've been hearing from the GOP for 20 years now. What makes you any different? Well, actually, that's not true at all. In fact, I am one of the few young conservative voices running for office across this country. And something that I speak about all the time is the indoctrination of my generation, which is having a direct impact in some of these mass shootings we've seen over the last 20 years. Uh, the liberal left has actually sees every institution in this country, from the mainstream corporate media to Hollywood, to our entire culture, to our public education system, our higher education system as well, which is pushing a very deranged and incredibly disturbing uh, ideology on the minds of our youth, whether it's this transgender push that we see, whether it's really a lack of respect for our country, for traditional values that have made our country great. We've, we have had a culture of uh, firearms in this country since it started more than 200 years ago. Over the last 20 years, what have we seen this rise in mass shootings? I believe that's a direct result of the liberal indoctrination that we've seen across every institution. It's my goal as a young conservative to fight against that and to really Really reinstill those traditional values that allow people to become successful, prosperous, and safe American citizens. Well, Caroline, you hit your points. Thank you so much for your time.
Thank you. I do want to turn now to Maxwell Frost, though, Democratic congressional candidate in Florida. I do want to ask, you did agree to join our program tonight. I'm very grateful for that. Um, you did not want to have a conversation directly with Caroline. Can you share with us why that is? And also, how do you expect to bridge the gap on Capitol Hill and compromise with the other side uh, if you refuse to have a conversation? Yeah, definitely. Well, first off, thank you for having me on. You know, and for me in these times, it's it's about talking about the issues and the solutions that we have. And so what I'm most interested at this point is talking with folks about who I am, um, what our campaign is about, and the solutions that we want to provide to the American people. You know, right now I'm engaged in the Democratic primary, um, and we're looking to win this thing um, so that way we can bring true representation to Congress. I understand. But what what about when it comes to talking to the other side? Isn't it important to loop them into the conversation and to respect other people's viewpoints. 100%, and that's what I've done throughout my entire career from working at the American Civil Liberties Union, which is a nonpartisan organization with which works with both folks from both the left and the right. Um, same thing I did at March for Our Lives when we worked with the gun owners and folks from the other side to figure out how we can come together um, to number one, solve this issue of gun violence, um, but also make a difference. So I 100% agree with you. You know, we still have to hold true to our values, but also find that medium where we're speaking with folks from the other side and compromise so we can make a difference. We saw that happen in the United States Congress just about a week ago when the bipartisan gun bill was signed and passed um, by the Congress and signed by the president. And there's a lot of room to continue that good work. All right. Well, we did ask Caroline this question. I want to make sure we give you a chance to respond as well. How would you go about stopping the mass shooting epidemic in our country? You know, this is an issue that's going to require a lot of levels to be pulled. And we've heard the same rhetoric from the right for years and years that it's just mental health. And I will say mental health is a part of it, of course. Statistics show us, though, that folks with mental health issues are more likely to actually be shot by a gun than commit gun violence themselves. So there's a lot of nuance here. You know, first off, I think we have to make sure that we're ensuring that guns are not falling in the wrong hands. Um, there are things like universal background checks and uh, extreme risk protection orders, otherwise known as red flag laws, that can help end guns gun violence um, in, in, in a good way and are supported by both Republicans and Democrats and a majority of gun owners. I think the second thing we have to look at is how we get money to community organizations. Um, something I was proud to work on at March for Our Lives is what's called community violence intervention. And it's when we give money to organizations on the ground that stop gun violence before it happens. See, these are things that I believe both the left and the right can agree on and is a way that we can save lives. If we can pass legislation that saves one, two, three, four, five lives a day, I think it's worth it because behind every number, there's a human being. Well, Maxwell, and I'm speaking completely off script here, I am so happy to see your engagement and your passion and Caroline's engagement and passion. That is exactly what we need in this country. We are more divided now than ever. So tell me, what hope can we have if we cannot get both of you to come on this program and just have a conversation face to face? I, I think we can have a lot of hope. And what I look at is the work that's going on on the ground. If you look at our campaign, um, we see a campaign that is made up of folks from both the left and the right that are coming together. And for me, it's about having these conversations in good faith and figuring out how we can move forward to provide solutions that will save lives. This is personal for me, right? I'm a survivor of gun violence. This is work I've been doing for a decade. Um, and so for me, I'm interested in figuring out the best ways to move forward, save people's lives. And you know, this is something that's impacted my community community with Pulse. We just uh, had the anniversary just a couple weeks ago where we lost 49 lives. And so, you know, I am interested in moving that conversation forward and do have a lot of hope um, in the future of this country, especially the future of our generation. Maxwell, I appreciate you and I appreciate Caroline for being on tonight. I thank you for allowing us to ask some hard questions. And uh, if you win, there will be many more. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.